Hey, y'all, almost done with probability. I know it's a shock. Um, we're hitting into the like pinnacle keystone types of stuff. Um, a lot of the early stuff was set up, so let's jump right into it. Can you taco tongue or evil eyebrow? Taco tongue, of course, is you rolling your tongue like that. Evil eyebrow is raising up one eyebrow, which I can't do otherwise. It wouldn't. Um, and so this was the, actually the data that I had last year. So I had, um, and this is the same data that we used in the previous lesson. So this is obviously day two. So I have 10 people who can do both, six people who can only do taco done, four people who can only do evil eyebrow, four people who can't do anything. And then the totals are there. And so what this is gonna go through and do, and it's gonna start talking about up here, it says, are they independent? Do we know what independence is? Nope. So you're just gonna follow the questions and see where it leads us, hence the experience part. And again, all this stuff can be found at StatsMedic. You probably already know that by now. Links down below if you want a copy of the notes. Like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. So here we go. Um, suppose we randomly choose a student from class. And so the first question is, um, what's the probability of yes, they can taco tongue or yes, they can evil eyebrow? Same question. I think we ended the main lesson from last time. So we've got, this is how many people can taco tongue. We've got 16 out of the 24. 14 out of the 24 can do evil eyebrow. And then we have to take off the intersection, if you remember, because these 10 people are counted in both the 14 and the 16. So that's going to give me 20 out of 24. You could turn it into a decimal. That's not what we're necessarily going for right now, but that's what we've got. So now the next question was this, given, the, given that the person selected has evil eyebrows, so we already know that they can do that. Okay, And so because of that, um, it's going to change how we set this up. What's the probability that they are a yes taco tongue, right, as a fraction? So you are saying right now, because since we know the person's evil eyebrow, you're basically in this category right here. And so because of that, our population effectively is now just the evil eyebrow people. Okay, so that's 14. How many of those people? Because we already know that's true. What's the probability that they are yes taco tongues? That's 10. So I get 10 out of 14, and then that's about 71.4%. Safest number, always go three decimal places, because that means you're going to go to the tenth place in terms of percentages. The way that you end up writing that is called this, okay? So yes to taco tongue. That is a really poor double T there, I'm sorry. And this line down here is how you say given in probability. Given, so... What's the probability that you have taco tongue given that you have evil eyebrows, okay? The second one over here is always gonna be the condition that has already been met, all right? So now the question, let's reverse it, or let's go for the compliment. What's the, given that the person selected is no evil eyebrow, so I mean, that means we're now over here. What's the probability that they are a yes taco tongue person? So notice here, we have 10 people who can't do evil eyebrow, six of them can taco tongue. So that's where I got these numbers here. So again, my population is now not taco tongue, and I can do six of those because that condition is our first one. So that's 60%. So the probability that yes, people can taco tongue, if we know that they can't do the evil eyebrow, then is going to, is that. So again, given, and there's my condition. So the definition of independence means that if knowing whether or not one event has occurred does not change the probability of what's going on, okay? So if you know that one event has occurred or you don't, you're still gonna get the same probability that the second event occurred. And so because of that, here, we're gonna look up here. So we've got a 71.4% chance that people who can have, do an evil eyebrow can do the taco tongue. Likewise, down here, now we have a 60%, should be likewise, I suppose, sorry. We have a 60% chance that people who can't evil eyebrow can do taco tongue. So since those numbers are not the same, it's not going to be independent. So um, the way that I wrote that out is this. No, because people who can taco tongue, yes, I know that's supposed to be a C. Okay, can talk, can evil eyebrow, or more likely to taco tongue. So the two skills are not independent. All right. There is a second page to this. So obviously pause wherever you need to. But here is the second event. Because we're going to expand this a touch. Because this is one of those things you just need to do a bunch, okay? So you may even want to pause this. So here is the data for all the seniors at West Chicago Community High School. Boom, 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 boom. We did 200 people, can evil, we did 600 total, two, uh, 600 seniors, 200 of them can do the eval brow, 400 can't. 
480 can do the evil, uh, attack of tongue, 120 can't. And then there's the breakdowns there. So find each of the following using the data table, right? It's a fraction, a decimal, and a percentage. And that's, a, again, something else that's going to be good to get into practice of doing. Um, now, quick story. Actually had a senior one year not do well on a local test um, because they got one of the first questions wrong, and it was simply turning a fraction into a percentage. And one of the options on the answer was 0.8. Would be, in this case, would be 0.8. So they just marked that down since that's what their calculator said. So don't go fast. So probability that you can yes taco tongue, 480 out of 600. So that's 80%. Probability that I can taco tongue if I can do taco eye or if I can do the taco eyebrow. What would that look like? Evil eyebrow. So this is my condition, so that means I'm blocking out those. So that's going to be 180 out of 200. So that's 90%. Okay, so it, already we know this is not independent. Okay, because here we don't know if something's going on or not. That's 80%. This should be 80% if it's independent. Just to be safe, we're going to go do the other one. What's the probability of taco tongue if there is no evil eyebrow? So now we're over here. Taco tongue, no evil eyebrow, 75%. And here we go. So you would say, no, they're not independent. Ta-da. Why? Because the percentages aren't the same. Another reminder, to disprove something, you only need one case. To prove something that's independent, you would have to show all three of these. Okay. To show that something's not independent, all you need to do is show that you usually go these two don't work or don't match up. All right. Fill in the table. All right. So now here, you're going to fill in the table as if it were independent. So to do that, 80% of our 600 people can taco tongue. 20% of our people cannot taco tongue. And so because of that, I'm going to go through right here. So what's going to end up happening is that this 80% breakdown should be the same both with the evil eyebrow crowd and the not evil eyebrow crowd. And so these are the numbers that we should get. All right. So if we're going to use the independent table, you're going to write a fraction, et cetera, et cetera. So if it was independent, we'd be seeding 80%. That's the same as what we have up here. Taco tongue, yes, we have evil eyebrows. So you're going to get 160 out of 200, which is also... 80%. Taco tongue, no evil eyebrow, 320 out of 400. That's also 80%. So this is what it would look like if we did have independence between the two events. So, oh, and I actually got ahead of myself. So number nine, what do you notice about all of them? Problem number six, these are all different. These are all the same. So that's the difference between or not independent and independent. Okay. So when you generalize this, what ends up happening is so generalize, complete the following statement using a formula. A is meaning, yes, they can taco tongue. B means that they can do evil eyebrow. Because usually we label events by letters just because who wants to write two letters when you can, or two words when you can write a single letter, right? So probability of A equals the probability that A given B is equal to probability of A given not B or the complement of B. So that defines that A and B are independent. All right, so there ends the experience part. We're going to formalize it in a second. We'll talk to you soon.